Alright, well good morning, good evening, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, citizens of YouTube, Pastor Dow here. Well, let me um, get in here and make this video and let me go at a different angle and a different approach that people are commonly used to, okay? Uh, just the other day I was speaking with a young lady and um, she says to me, Pastor, I definitely would like to uh, be married to a good man one day. And I said, looked at her. She's young, beautiful young woman. And um, I thought for a moment, you know, as you especially think about the world, people's backgrounds, their environment, where they come from, how their minds have been influenced, how their minds have been shaped by the environment where they were reared and raised in. And so I thought for a moment, I thought for a moment, just sit there and pause. And then I said to her, sister, do you even have the mindset to be with a good man? And then she thought for a moment and thought, and I said, I tell you what, you just get back with me a little bit later on that. And the reason being when I, when I had made this statement, I started thinking, how many women today actually really truly have the mindset to be with a good man? And what is a good man? Now, I'm assuming that a good man is, uh, especially over in, in the ministry, a good man would be someone that can provide, someone that can provide such a lifestyle um, that the woman can be a chase keeper at home because over here, our women do not work outside of the home unless they're, you know, single or they've just come into the ministry. Um, but unlike the world out there, you know, where men, well, I'm going to say women, women outnumber men literally almost five to one. And is getting very slim pickings for the women out there today to find what you call a good man because I don't know why it is and I can't understand it for the life of me and I and, and anything that I'm saying right here I'm not saying that this is the way that this young woman is I'm saying from I'm drawing conclusions from what I see in the world as a whole uh, what I see online and the experiences that I see when I go outside from our community here and it's really disheartening because I sit up there and I look at these women today and it's obvious um, when you go you're not seeing people getting married today and I'm sitting up there watching young women who would literally give up their bodies To, you know what we call well in the day we will we will call Pookie and Ray Ray, and of course Pookie and Ray Ray has four five six other children by four or five six other women and stuff, but then all of a sudden after they live this life where they have devalued themselves, and they have been used up and turned more times than a doorknob, all of a sudden they want to sit down and then they want a good man, and so I ask myself the question like this: Can you? Are you? Are you even qualified to even be a, be with a good man? Can you be with a good man? Uh, because a good man, or what's the term they use out here in the world? Oh, they use a high value. A high value man. A high value man thinks differently. Or let's just say whatever they define as a high value man. I don't think a high value man is defined on money. I think on the amount of money it says. I think of a high value man, according to me, uh, is defined on number one is relationship with the most high Yah, and then you can start going two three four five and six when you're talking about integrity of heart the ability to provide to be it the ability to be a man of his word the ability to um, be very confident and walk sure of himself and know um, that he's a servant of the most high Yah, and that he will be the man of his house and be and raise and rear a successful family in order to build his legacy. 
And so coming from that perspective over here, I started thinking of uh, many women today even qualified to be with that kind of man, a man that actually shows fruit, a man that actually, uh, that you can look back and peer over the little short period of life that he has and, and you can see that this man is obviously uh, a person that prospers, obviously that this person continues to keep developing themselves and continue to keep growing uh, week after week, month after month, and year after year. And I, again, I just I have to be honest. Are women today in this generation in society, are they really truly ready for that kind of man? Because when you look at the woman out there that is actually have just, again, devalued themselves and, and, and went through all these different phases and, and just have just went out here and just wrecked their soul and destroyed their lives. And it, from my perspective, if you haven't spent anywhere from two to five years in walking in repentance, having your mind transformed to where you totally think differently, I mean, you to, to where you when you think, you're not thinking no longer your own thoughts or, or the thoughts of the environment that you come from, but you're thinking from this right here. You're conforming to the image of what a righteous, set-apart woman should be. And for the most part, you know, I watch people all the time because, I, you know, I marry a lot of people. I watch people uh, put on for what they desire, and then shortly after they put on what they desire and they pass that test, once they get into it, I watched them revert back and go back to the person that they were when they were in the streets or uh, wherever they come from or whatever background. And I don't think myself personally that women are putting the time in today to learn how to cook, to learn how to clean, to learn how to guide the house, to learn how to be meek and humble, a woman of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of y'all for great price. That's greatly lacking in this day because it is desired. I mean, you think about it. Um, I remember growing up and watching uh, older women, you know, grandmothers who know how to stay married. And I sit and watch them have five, six, seven, eight, nine children, 10, 11, 10, 12 children. And they basically, they basically just wore one of these um, gowns type things in the house. Uh, they would definitely get up and, and um, um, they would clean themselves and, and, and prep themselves for their man as if you, you would have thought that they were actually going out here to go to work. And what they were doing was just pre keeping themselves presentable to the man, presentable to the public, and presentable to the children. And they were busy in trying to be like be a standard so that the, the young women that's coming after them is going to be somebody else's um, they're going to leave the, their father's house one day and become a wife of, a, of another man, uh, they will prepare them for that, teach them how to cook and clean and read and write and homeschool and doing all this other stuff. And, and, of course, some of them did send them to school and stuff, but they would keep these women in such a way, in a straight, unspotted from the world. They, they wouldn't go out here and be these, these synonyms I hear today, 304 thoughts and... and, and uh, knockoffs and shakedowns and um, uh, jump balls and they got a bunch of words out here for them. What I am actually saying is that I really truly believe because I see and I have first hand experience in watching. I see the difference between a woman who is a virgin and a woman who has been used. You know, one is on the literally like on the used car lot. I know a lot of women have a lot of high lofty opinions of themselves. They think that they are worth the value of a new vehicle, but I'm telling you right now, you're not. Um, but I see the mindset and the attitudes of women who are virgins who keep themselves until marriage. And then I watch them years after, and they still have that same meekness. They still have that same uh, confidence. They have that virtuous woman attitude and spirit uh, because they've only had one man their whole entire life and they're busy being conformed to him and helping him build his house and having his children. Now, I've also seen on the flip side to where people have, have been dealt a bad hand and hadn't even been reared and raised into nothing. Women, I've, saw, I've seen them come and repent, turn, change their mind, change their lives. 
and really get, if not the same, as close to a virtuous woman as you can possibly get having those experiences. And I've watched the most high clean them up and make them them type of women. But they're very few and far in between because most women today are stubborn. Most women are, are trying to control, rule, and dominate a man, even though they can't do about physical power and might and prowess. They'll try um, to use this wicked mindset to manipulate and be cunning. And I see a lot of men today just literally getting wore out. And some of you women today, I, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, um, you might as well just get ready to be along for a long, long time. Um, or either, since you're not going to change or conform, um, you might as well be content with the way that you are. Uh, in a worldly sort because a righteous man is simply not going to put up with you. He's just not going to do it. He don't have to waste his time or his life pouring into you. So then I was thinking the other day as I heard, I actually heard this on YouTube and I started thinking again. I said, that is a good question because see, too many times more often than not in this generation, it's all about what is the man going to do? What is the man going to do? What is the man going to bring? How's the man going to provide? When is the man going to do this? When is the man going to do that? And nobody is holding the woman accountable at all. So I'm going to flip that script here for a second, and I'm going to ask, who's going to start holding these women accountable? I think the best person to, to be able to hold a woman accountable is another woman. And if women do not hold other women, women accountable, then what is this demonic entity that has y'all so fearful of each other that you refuse to hold another woman accountable? Or you're afraid to get in her face and correct her, especially if you're an older woman. So then I heard this the other day. Uh, the phrase went like this. Uh, you need to ask women, whoever you meet, wherever you go, or if you're considering someone, what do you bring to the table besides your vagina? And that's it. And then the man said, and don't tell me the table either. Because the man owns the table. So tell me, what do you bring to, to the table besides your vagina? And I sit and watch, and I wanted to hear the response because I've never heard that question before. And then I said, I said, look at here. These women can't answer. And as I went through a few more videos, there was some, you know, there's a lot of videos of women out there on YouTube that is flat out against this Jezebel manipulating, domineering, wicked spirit that's trying to be masculine and trying to rule the house like a man does. They're against it. They be on them women hard. They're righteous women too. And um and they basically just told them just tell just say straight up you don't bring nothing to the table if you're gonna continue to keep having that mindset. Now I'm gonna help women out what you can bring to the table. You can be cooperative, you can be agreeable, you can be uh, a nurturer, you can be meek, you can be quiet, you can be submissive um, you can actually be there to help build that man's house. Um, you can actually be a help meet. Uh, you can be a woman of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of Yah, which is of a great price. All these character traits and all these these ways are, 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 are strong values that are needed in this daytime and hour. Because man, when you consider a woman for marriage, when you consider a woman for marriage, concubinage, or whatever, it's better than what they're doing out here. All these whoredoms and stuff, divorce, remarriage, divorce, remarriage, divorce, remarriage, divorce, remarriage. Uh, uh, you're my girlfriend this week. No, you're not this week. I got somebody else, and then I return to you, and then I defile the land, and all this other stuff. That's nothing but utter confusion. It really is. But to think that a woman today has the ability and the power, based on her lifestyle, you've got to ask yourself a question, man. Is this the woman I really truly want to rear and raise my family to be the first line teacher? Do I want her as the first line teacher of my sons for a period of time then I take over? Do I want her to be the example of a woman to raise my daughters uh, so I can prepare them for marriage? Do I really want that type of attitude? Do I want that mindset? Do I want that type of woman in my house? Is she toxic um, or is she a benefit? If she's going to try to come in and tear down my house and argue and fuss and fight against every damn body in the house and everyone and bring just nothing but utter chaos, or is she a woman of peace? 
Is she a Proverbs 31 woman? Man, you got a lot to evaluate. You really, truly do. Um, you really, really, truly do. Women should be preparing themselves for marriage for a righteous man. That's what they should be doing. Um, women don't go out there and waste your most prolific childbearing years, your youth, by going out there giving your body to the streets and to the world and, and, and getting ran through by every single man and stuff. And by the time you get to your 30s, you think you should be able to settle down and get what you call a righteous man or a high-value man when you're, you're under a strong delusion. You really truly are. Very few women can recover from something like that. Very few women can recruit from something like that and become a righteous woman. I believe that they can because when you go read in Hebrews 11 about Rahab, she was a righteous woman and she was considered to be a woman of whoredoms. She was a harlot. And yet she made it to Hebrews, the 11th chapter. The Hall of Fame of Faith, along with Abraham and Jacob and Moses and David and Gideon, man, that's some good company to be in. That's some real good company to be in. So do I think it can be done? Sure I do. I really truly think it can be done. But it's definitely going to take a transformed mind, a renewing of the mind. It's going to take a lot. It really truly is. It's going to take a 100% total revamping of the whole entire volition of a person to be able to become that type of a woman. Because usually that type of woman usually starts from someone who is a virgin is being reared and raised by either a righteous woman or righteous women. And there's very few of them in this generation. Consider what I say, most I give you understanding.